Good morning. Thank you all for coming. My name is Alan Rice. I'm the city administrator for the city of Hoover. This morning you're going to hear a welcoming uh, comment from Mayor Bercato and he will introduce Councilman Derek Murphy who will speak. We also have with us Chief Nick Durz, our city Green. We have local clergy members who will at the conclusion. Unfortunately, we'll be able to take any questions this morning following their statements. Thank you again for coming. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. You know, in the wake of the tragedies that occurred on November 22nd, 2018, I've had the opportunity to meet with the family of Mr. Emantic E.J. Bradford, along with City Councilman Derek Murphy and others to express our sincere condolences for the loss of their son. We have all witnessed situations across this country where conditions we want to and are committed to getting to the truth and getting it right. I've also taken time to talk to the members of the Hoover City Council, the Chief of Police, and others to address serious issues that has caused tension in our country and now in our community. Investigations take time and we're doing everything we can to cooperate with the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency in finding out the truth of what happened. I've also had the time to speak at length with Councilman Derek Murphy. In working with him and learning from him, I've heard his thoughts and concerns, and I'm very thankful the people of Hoover elected him as a representative to make sure every voice is heard. His leadership, input, and work on the Hoover City Council are invaluable. I support him, and I want you to hear what he has to say. With that, I'd like to turn the podium over to Councilman Murphy. Thank you, Mayor Bracado. I'm gonna make a few statements. We will end in prayer. Uh, we will not take questions afterwards. We are your councilmen. We were elected because you trusted us to build the city and keep this city safe. When I received a text from my wife and daughter on last Thursday stating that they were hiding because it was shooting, being a council member didn't matter. I was terrified. I prayed because that's all I could do. Praying is the least we can do for the Bradford family. Now, I can't imagine what the Bradford family went through, especially considering how they found out they lost their son. Through all of this, the Bradford family were still willing to sit down and talk with us. They have our love, they have our prayers. We're waiting with you with the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency report, but I know time is important. Um, have Mayor Frank Bracado, Chief Durzis, and my fellow council members are all in full support of this request. We urge Aaliyah to approve this request no later than noon on Monday. Chief Durzis and I have also discussed a follow-up plan 
In the event we don't receive the information by Monday at noon, the chief will decide whether to release the limited information on his own. Thank you so much, Chief. Now, as my 91-year-old grandmother would say, we got to have some tough love conversation. They're never easy. Sometimes they are painful. But we have to have them. We must have them. We're going to have one today. Two nights ago, protesters exercised their constitutional right to peacefully protest outside of the mayor's home. Now, I wasn't at the protest. I can't tell you what was said. I can't tell you who said it. I can tell you that hate has no place anywhere in our city. During the protests, from protesters, from counter-protesters, or on social media. I can also tell you that two wrongs don't make a right. And I say that because regardless of what happened during the protests, some of the members of our community and outside of our community took to social media after the protests and said some hateful, racist things that have no place in the city of Hoover. We do not support those ideas. We do not condone those ideas. And those ideals will not help us heal from the tragedies of the past. Out of tragedy comes an opportunity. This time is no different. We have an obligation to have tough conversation, one that needs to be led for this country. We have to examine ourselves. We have to talk about race. We can't stop talking about race even when to unify or divide. Whether we're going to choose the side of hate or the side of love. Misinformation or if it means missing opportunities to live in our truths. See, for me, I choose love because hate is too heavy of a burden to carry. And those words by Dr. King, I would turn the podium over to Pastor Buddy and Pastor Mike to lead us in prayer. I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 60 and have a word of prayer, so let me pray for us. I will make peace your governor and well-being your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land. No ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call the walls salvation and your gates peace. Oh Lord, you know the longing of our hearts. You know the depths of our hurts. And Lord, we cry out, oh Lord, how long? How long until you return and put an end to all violence? Whether it's in the shopping mall or our streets or our homes, how long? How long before there's no more strife among people, no more assaults or abuse of power? How long? Lord, we know that you are a God who knows us, and we pray for healing and hope and help for all those impacted by the shooting at the mall, and especially the Bradford family. You're the God of all comfort. Comfort them. But our hearts still cry out, how long? How long before the day when all racism and prejudice and tribalism will be eradicated and will be replaced with love and honor and justice and the richest community imaginable, your community? We crave that day. How long, O oh Lord? when there will be no more arguing between friends, no more pettiness between people, no more divisiveness between races. How long, O oh Lord? We pray for the day when rancor will give away to righteousness and meanness will be overturned by kindness and domineering will be replaced with serving. We yearn for the day when peace will be our governor and well-being will be our ruler. Lord, we're thankful for the leadership of this city. We ask that you'll give them wisdom 
Oh, they're not perfect. They've made mistakes, but Lord, they are seeking to serve you, to bring peace and harmony. And God, I ask that you will continue to put wisdom in their hearts. And Lord, we pray for our community. God, we pray for that peace that passes understanding. For you are the Prince of Peace. You're the sovereign over all things. And today we ask that you will grant us seeds of grace to sow so that in that ultimate day of the harvest of peace, we will be able to know that you have been strong. In Jesus' name, amen. It was Albert Hubbard who said, when God looks you over, he won't look you over for medals, diplomas, nor degrees, but rather for scars. The incidents at the Galleria has opened a wound that no one imagined. But through transparency, through clarity, and through honesty, we can make this a scar that can heal. On the night before Jesus died, he prayed a prayer. He didn't pray for our success. He didn't pray that we would live lavish lifestyles. He prayed a prayer that simply said, I pray that you will be one. He prayed the night before he died for unity. And with the transparency given by this city and the assurance that they will do everything they can, I believe that unity can come by releasing those tapes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for unity, not just in Hoover, but between Hoover and Birmingham. I pray, God, that it won't be a black or white thing, but a wrong versus right thing. I pray, God, in the midst of this, you will cause peace into our I pray right now, God, from the bottom of my heart that we will begin to see each other not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. I pray, God, that the dream that was given by Dr. Martin Luther King will become a reality. That although this incident has brought out the ugliness of some people, all people are not filled with hatred. And I pray for the courage for those who are filled with love and compassion to let their voices be heard. I pray right now that you will cover this city, cover Birmingham, cover the Bradford family, cover the family of the little girl, cover the family of the young man shot. But God, I pray a special prayer that we would all unify to pray for every person unnamed who will never be the same, for the small kids who were running through the mall terrified, for that mother who had to explain to her child why they had to hide behind a bench, that God, what we need right now is for all those who have a heart for justice and a heart for people to rise together, regardless of race, denomination, or personal agendas, and lift up the name of God. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. All right, again, thank you very much for coming. We will continue with our announced schedule of a planned release at 1030 every Monday morning, and we will have interim statements as other events arise that necessitate uh, immediate notification. With that, we thank you. Uh, please uh, be aware that there's an area outside. Uh, you want to move your equipment there and uh, interact with any members of the public who might be here that you'd like to speak with. The police department has an area in the front parking lot for that. Thank you very much.